there's so much more to video games than the accurate delivery of virtual munitions into the heads of the player's electronic enemies. Like the movie industry, video games encompass a wide variety of different genres. It's not just blockbuster fare. Indie games like this one, for instance, require the player to loudly chase symbols around a room, button bashing. To games with worlds which aren't made of pixels, but paper and pulped wood. Nottingham's Game City Festival celebrates all facets of games and gaming and acts as a showcase for indie titles which deviate from the AAA franchise fair norm. Game City is about two things. It's about that we think that everyone should be able to play games and we think that everyone should be able to make games. So games are becoming not just something that you can consume but a really interesting form of, of self-expression. A great example of this idea is new indie title Lumino City from developers State of Play Games, an adventure title with a handmade twist. It's a game that's taken three years to complete, a year of which was spent building the real-life model for the game world. We don't use any 3D software at all, um, we actually use Flash. Um, but Flash has reasonably good video capabilities and so all our graphics are video over which we overlay animated two-dimensional characters. The main difference is that we basically have to make the game in full before we start because after you've filmed a model like this you can't go back and change things afterwards. Uh, everything had to be right so we started off with a very simple sketched version of it um, and we basically made the game in two dimensions first, in black and white. When we were happy with that, we then thought, right, let's get a motion control camera, let's get a studio, let's build this and do this properly. Um, but even then, we only had the budget to get that motion control camera for one day. Uh, and so it was a big pressure situation to get all this filmed in a day. After a year's build, it was, it was one day or nothing. This has been like making an eight hour film in one day. Along with championing indie games and talent, the organisers of this event want to inspire the next generation of games developers as well. This is a daily workshop that I'm running here at Game City uh, where I'm teaching children about the ages of like six or seven to about 10 or 11 years old uh, how to make games in a basic program called Scratch. The program that I use is geared towards children, so it's very simple for them to grasp and it's really easy for them to understand. The programming language is a drag and drop puzzle piece uh, format, and so they will just drag things in and see what works, read through the sentences that it creates. Now that it's so accessible to be able to make games and being able to show them how that's made under the hood or how that could be made under the hood and expose these kids to the idea that they could do this too when they grow up, I think is amazing. And this festival intends to leave a permanent impression on the gaming landscape. So Fine Art has a national gallery, theatre has a national theatre, and here in Nottingham, opening in March 2015, will be the first ever permanent cultural space for video games. The National Video Game Arcade is going to be in this building um, from March next year. We're incredibly excited about that. So it's building on the work that we've been doing with the Science Museum, establishing the National Video Game Archive since 2008. So there's around 15,000 objects in that collection now. We'll have four exhibitions a year, um, school trips. Literally, this is going to be the home of video games.